Hello everyone! It has been a full six months since my last video in San Juan and I kind of left you hanging about where I was going next and where I was trying to get my work visa approved for. And since I know that everyone's been absolutely on the edge of their seats waiting to hear about where I was going, I decided I wasn't going to keep you in the dark a moment longer. In November of last year, Carl and I moved to Tortola, a tiny island in the British Virgin Islands. The BVI is part of an archipelago in the Caribbean Sea nearby Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. After spending two years in Ireland and four months in Iceland, we are in desperate need of some hot weather. I'm on my way from Cane Garden Bay, where we live, to Nanny Key, where Carl works. It takes about 25 to 30 minutes to drive there. Carl got himself a job as a sailing coach, and I found one in a local restaurant. If you've ever imagined the picture-perfect deserted island beach paradise, you were imagining BBI. Filming while driving probably isn't the safest idea. It is an absolutely stunning place. The water is a cozy 26 degrees most of the year, fluorescent blue and perfect for snorkeling or scuba diving. The area is full of shipwrecks to dive on, thanks to the hurricane season. The entire island is blanketed with lush, vibrant vegetation with colorful tropical flowers popping up everywhere. It's not fancy, but it's free. As I mentioned before, Tortola has a hurricane season and it's something that is impossible to forget in day-to-day -day life. In September 2007, the country was destroyed by Hurricane Irma, and two years later, the wreckage is still very present. Nevertheless, we settled in fast. We got ourselves a tiny little car and moved into an apartment. Our plan was to stay forever. This is Lulu. We immediately began shopping for houses for sale on the island and even went as far as to have a meeting with a realtor. Why then are we not there now? As you may have noticed, I am not in beach attire or have any trace of a tan. No, at the end of January, Carl and I packed up our things and moved back to Saskatchewan. What? We were living in a tropical paradise and we decided to leave there and live in Saskatchewan instead? We must be crazy. My answer to that is probably. But a very important lesson that Carl and I have learned from living in several countries over the years is that there is this thing called quality of life. And in our experience, quality of life varies drastically from place to place. I will give you some examples. The pros of living in the BBI are, the weather is perfect, barring hurricanes, of course. 
The Caribbean Sea is a magical place where you can swim with dolphins and turtles. Beer is very inexpensive. And if you are a person who likes to go out a lot, there are a lot of funky beach bars. You can pick fresh coconuts off the tree and eat them. It has a culture of expats that are very welcoming. There are hundreds of beautiful chickens and roosters that strut around the island. Those are a lot of pros, right? No, those are pros of a vacation spot. And I will say it is the perfect spot for a beach vacation. And one would be hard pressed to find a better one. However, living there is a different story and I will list the cons. It is a tiny island where not a lot grows, therefore everything must be imported. What this means is everything other than beer is extremely expensive, unavailable or limited. That also means that the groceries are filled with boxed, packaged, preserved foods, and any fresh produce you want is certainly going to be at least twice the amount that you want to pay for it, and it's guaranteed to go off within two days. Also, if you like meat, forget about it because it's impossible to get fresh. You're gonna have to get it frozen. Next, getting anything official done is going to take forever. Now, I don't want to go on a rant, but to sum up, if you needed anything official done, it was going to be a long, unnecessary and frustrating process. Then, the beach, as fantastic as it is, was unaccessible a lot of the times for the reason that the sun went down around six o'clock pretty much around the year. And what that means for people who work is that they finish work at five, no longer have any daylight to spend at the beach. So the sun goes down very early. After that, all the pros of the island basically disappear and there's nothing to do in the evenings at all. Unless go out and party, if that's what you like to do, which I personally did. Finally, Carl and I were thrilled about our jobs. And it wasn't the kind of place where you could just apply at places around and get a new job. Um, since we were on working visas, it required you actually leaving the island for at least two months to get a new visa process. So you could not just switch jobs. Also, people enjoyed parking others in a lot. I could go on, but sufficient to say that life in Tortola was not going to work out for our lifestyle. Therefore, we decided not to waste any more time and move back to Saskatchewan. I want to emphasize that we did not hate our time in Tortola. It was an absolutely amazing three months. And if we had moved there a few years earlier, I bet you we would have liked it a lot more when we were more into the partying scene and we would have stayed there longer. But we were in a position where we wanted to buy a house, improve our careers and our lives overall, and that wasn't going to be possible on the island. During the three months, we had went scuba diving on a shipwreck, swam with sharks and turtles, learned about a new culture, sailed on beautiful catamarans, did yoga on the beach and spent Christmas in a gorgeous villa. Sounds like a great vacation to me. There are the turtles! <laughs>